So you want to build pedals, let's talk about it. Building pedals is not that hard. You don't have to read books. You don't have to have um, a large background in building uh, electrical equipment. It's simple as finding your component, putting it in the right part of the PCB and soldering it. Now, where you start is all up to you. I personally have an order that I now do, uh, which is going from resistors to diodes to the uh, chip holder. And then I'll move on to the larger items like capacitors and ceramic capacitors. Um, there's no real way, just for me, I like to be able to hold work from a lower level to a higher level because then everything can, can evenly be welded and held properly. Uh, just keep in mind that when you do capacitors, um, just make sure you leave a little bit of a gap from the bottom of the board uh, to the bottom of that capacitor. So how long should the pedal take you? Um, normally, I think my first pedal took me about uh, a good three hours. If you're gonna do painting and you're gonna do the, the soldering and take your time with it, it'll probably take you between three to four hours, including painting and doing graphics. If you're just gonna use a marker on the outside and solder, you'll probably look at two hours. Um, it really depends on how, how in depth you're gonna go with this pedal, how much detail you're putting into it, and uh, how fast you can solder with everything if you're not used to doing solder boards. Let's talk about how to finish a pedal. There is no one way to do it. Um, some people like to hydro dip, other people use paint pens. Um, I personally prefer to have a more professional look, so I'll use an aerosol uh, spray can, and then I'll do water decals on top and cover with three layers of clear coat on top of the pedal, make sure nothing can scratch it up. Let's talk about wiring. Um, there's a ton of ways to do this. There is no one way um, or specific colors that have to go with one or the other. It's more of what, you're, what you want to do, um, and then you can go with the rules. So uh, normally you'll get black, red, and uh, white wires in your kit, um, normally, if, depending on what you, who you buy it from. So what I normally do, well, anything that's hot, any lead lines, I'll use red. Um, anything that's a ground, I'll use black and uh, the whites will be fillers for um, negatives, uh, let's say, or you can make white your, your grounds. It really doesn't matter, but what I do suggest is keep everything um, completely the same throughout the whole pedal. If you use red for, uh, for leads, then make sure you use red for the entire lead. If you have to switch out and make sure red's there, that's fine. Um, but it just makes things a lot easier when you start to group wires together and you're putting um, positive with positives and, and it just makes sense. Now, do you have to buy more wires? Nope. Um, what you're given is more than enough than what you need. I've actually started collecting excess wire from all my kits because I don't use them all. Um, and then when it comes to figuring out if you should cut the wires and restrip them, um, it's based off you. You can leave the wire length there, solder everything and put it in the case. It is doable, but it's very tight. Um, if you can get to the point where you can um, get the wires spacing right, it's perfect. Let's talk about the PCB real quick. Um, the board isn't blank and it's not where you're gonna have to figure out where things might go. It's gonna tell you. So on your kit, um, each of your components are labeled with a small little yellow sticky or white paper that says um, a number and a, and a value. So it'll be 10 milli, uh, 10 milli ohms, um, 1500 ohms, it's whatever the, those parts are rated for. On the PCB, those numbers and values are gonna be on there with an outline. All you're gonna do is take those and you're gonna match them up. So I like to start resistors because they're the most parts on a, on a build and you can nail out a lot more with those rooms. Um, the only difference is some of those parts do have um, mandatory orientation. So for diodes, those have to go on a certain order. You'll see those because they're either black solid ones with a white band around those. Um, the resistors have a ton of bands on them. Those are all values. It doesn't matter which way those go, but diodes do, and because that's because they have a negative and a positive. The same with capacitors and LEDs. You'll notice that on the wiring, one leg is longer than the other. Okay, so you need to pay attention to the negative values and make sure they go on the board on the negative hole. That will completely destroy the board if you don't watch what you're doing on those parts. When it comes to ceramic um, capacitors, it doesn't matter. And when it comes to um, your foot switch, it doesn't matter which way you flip it, it's because however the wiring is on the board, it'll, it'll match up. So don't worry about the, the foot switch part. Now here's the one important thing that you're gonna do that you need to look out for. 
If this is your first time using a soldering iron, do not overheat the PCB board. The board that you got already has inlays of metal in it and um, some type of um, material to hold it. Now, if you overheat the rivets that are gonna hold the soldering iron, you're gonna notice your PCB bubbling. Once it bubbles and it, and it gets to the point where it's distorted, you've broken the connection. So be aware how long you're putting those on there. I wouldn't do it longer than three to four seconds, um, especially if you're using one of the cheap irons like I use. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure the tip is clean. Make sure you braise the tip real quick. One, two, three, four, take it off. Um, if you leave it on longer than four seconds, you're gonna overheat your parts. You're gonna burn up the parts um, inside and then you're gonna destroy the PCB. And once the PCB is broken, it's gonna be a done, done project. How much soldering do you use is all up to you. It's more of a feel and it's really hard to explain. Um, I like to get a good seven, six you know, inches of um, soldering spool. And when I heat it up, I like to feed in. And, I, and for me, it's the speed that I'm at is more of a, I don't go more than a half inch inch uh, pulling into a solder. Um, I'll take it off, I'll flip it over, make sure I have a good connection on the side and it's not like where I put too much in the back and it didn't flow through the other side. So make sure when you when you fill up your holes, <clears throat> you're gonna do a one, one, two, three, four count, fill it, take it off, flip the board and make sure you have a nice, good, solid silver chrome look um, that's met on the other side. If you flip it over and you see it's flat, like nothing flowed through, don't add more solder, just heat up the, the joint and let it flow through.